Well, hey, everybody, Stephen Sitkowski here. Welcome to this week's edition of Market Insights. We had a fantastic week last week. Been kind of nice seeing the turnaround, right? After enduring three months of yikes, <laughs> we've had a couple of really nice weeks. So, quick reminder that everything we do here is for educational purposes only and not intended as investment advice. So what should you be mindful of as you consider building out your portfolio? Well, what are some of the influences that are impacting the market from a fundamental perspective? What is the overall market direction? Which of the sectors are performing, which are not? And then from that, you pick your individual stocks. So that is the correct approach, kind of step-by-step. Step. So what's moving the markets? Moody's lowers the U.S. credit rating outlook. This would be a big shocker. They're citing the fact that we have a lot of debt. A lot of debt is an understatement. $33 trillion worth. Another trillion worth of credit card debt. It's going to be interesting to see if all this comes home to roost at some time. Earnings per share grew at 5% in the third quarter for 2023. Not bad. Uh, retail sales fell in October. So consumers are starting to cut back. Might be due to the fact that a lot of folks are now paying their student loans. 10-year treasury ticks up to 4.638. That 10-year is critical. When it goes up, generally the market goes down and oil's just kind of hanging in there in the high 70s. What to watch this week? A lot of news, um, a lot of Fed speak this week. So you'll see that over and over again. Uh, today, Lisa Cook speaks. We've got the federal um, budget that'll be released. You'll see the deficit bunch more Fed speak comes out, then some important stuff Tuesday core CPI and the CPI gets released. And then on Wednesday, the PPI comes out. Uh, that's um, inflation at the wholesale level. CPI is at the consumer level. Retail sales will come out. Um, all really important. Uh, and then on Thursday, every Thursday, you have the initial jobless claims. We're looking for 222,000, a bunch of Fed speak, home builder index. And then on Friday, housing starts and some more Fed speak. So, um, you know, hopefully their tone is somewhat dovish. They don't get over the top trying to scare the hell out of. The markets, we'll see. This is last week's heat map. A lot of money to be made last week. Uh, met up 4.69. NVIDIA almost 7%. Broadcom 7.5%. Two had had a good week. Apple, Microsoft. Um, most of the red was utilities, energy, and drug manufacturers. Other than that, pretty much all good. Year to date, heat map, a uh, lot of money being made this year. If you're in the right stocks, Lily up almost 65%, Meta 175, Tesla 82, Amazon 70, uh, Google slash Alphabet 51, Broadcom 69. Look at NVIDIA, 235%. If you miss that one, ooh, woe unto you. Uh, Microsoft 53, Apple 42. It's been a fantastic year. Market breadth for last week. Um, advances versus decliners, not so good. New highs versus new lows. Um, that's problematic. 101 new highs, 184 new lows. On the um, NASDAQ, 159 versus 633. So, we're not out of the woods yet. Where's all the money been made? Right there. Large cap growth. 
I think that will continue to be where the money is made. I'm not a bottom fisher. Um, I like to find the winners and ride them. Stocks trading above their 50-day moving average. So that's moved up into the 40-some percent tile. You know, we need that above 50 percent. Percentage of stocks that are outperforming the S&P, way down here. It's a handful, like 25 percent. Well, it's a bit of an exaggeration, 28 percent, not far off. So you've got a handful of stocks that are outperforming. Most of the market is underperforming. Hedge funds are starting to cover some of their short positions. That's a nice bullish sign. Uh, 2024 outlook is rather rosy. Um, in U.S. dollars, are expecting the uh, market to move up about 12%. This is Goldman Sachs forecast commodity prices up 18%. Inflation expectations move higher. Um, so the outlook, most recent outlook for the next 12 months, 4.4%. It's higher than where it is now. A Fed pivot is not automatically bullish. Uh, it depends on the circumstances. If the Fed starts cutting rates because the economy is collapsing, you know that's problematic. The best case for... The market is that the Fed just pause and holds. But you can see after the Fed cut, there's a drop, but then the market screams higher. We'll see what happens this time around. Economic optimism index falls. Look at the drop in the from September to October. Just gigantic. There's so much negative news out there. I understand why optimism is down. Folks are nervous. Look at what's happening with consumer sentiment. It just uh, has been um, falling. So look at the month over month change, year over year change. Can we avoid a recession? Well, Goldman Sachs says the percentage of a recession in the next 12 months below 20%. Now, Bloomberg is above 50%, but it's down from where it was. Leading economic indicators, they're falling. Good reason for the Fed not to raise rates anymore. Investor sentiment popped up. So last week, I think we were 50% bearish. Now we're 27% bearish and 42% bullish. Yeah, look at here's the last week, 24 and 50 compared to 42. What a difference a week makes. Investors are so fickled. All right, let's check the chart, see what's going on. Hope all of you have had an excellent week. Look at the SPY. So this is a proxy for the S&P 500. And um, we are now above our 50-day moving average, which is really good. Can we get above 4,600? If so, you'll start to see money coming in off the sideline. How about the Qs? This is big tech. Yeah, great shape. Kind of up against a resistance level. We'll see what happens here, but you know, everything looks better. Small cap, it's Russell 2000. It's still well below its 50-day. It has just underperformed all year. So that's what's going on. I will hopefully be seeing all of you um, next week. So until then, be blessed. Bye for now.